Yo, losers, what's up? So, let me collect my thoughts. Ronnie just started the camera and I'm standing here with a metal thing. It's really early. <laughs> it's super early, like we never get up early to work on cars. My feelings are hurt. <laughs> Um, so we got the seats, the harness, the cage done on the Mustang. We got wheels on it. We got coilovers on it. We're missing power. That's the big, th I mean, the big ingredient. We're missing power because with 88 horsepower, like we haven't even tried to step it, step it sideways in the rain, but like in the dry. I didn't it's, even try. It. Yeah. <laughs> it's a no go. So this is what we're working on. I got this motor for 200 bucks from a friend and, uh, Said it had rod knock, so today we're gonna open it up and check it out, see if it has any uh, any bearing issues. Um, we're just gonna look at the internals of it, the reciprocating assembly, and uh, that's pretty much it. We um, we drained the oil yesterday, and the oil came out, and it was super clear. Check this out. There's no look at that. Metal in it at all. Look at that. No metal in it. Super clear. Really nice. There was there's no. Uh, <clears throat> we'll. Uh, Pour that pan out later into a into a jug, and we'll see if we've got any sediment in there. Like uh, I don't know any metal shavings or anything, but we didn't see anything when it was coming out, and I assume all that stuff settles to the bottom of the pan. So, um, I have never taken apart a V8. Ronnie tells me these are called lifters. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, we're gonna get these lifters out. We're gonna flip it over, get the oil pan out, and uh, I don't know, see what we can see. This motor's super fresh. Like these lifters have no wear on them. Let me get this thing to focus. You see that? So if they had some wear on them, we would have to put them back into the same holes, but because they're so fresh, we should be fine. By the way, this is a 302. Okay. It's a, um, I, I think it's an 80s 302. It's uh, board 60 over, and it's supposed to have a pretty st stout cam in it. So, like I said, we'll see once we get it apart. We're it's gonna pull like it off. Super Thumper or something? It's called a Howard's Growler. It's made by oh. Howard's Camshaft, and it's called a, the Growler Cam. Okay. So I don't know, but um, we got to take it all apart anyway to put a assembly lube back on it. Make sure, you know, nothing gets scarred up. So that's what we're gonna do. We think that this is the rod nut. Oh yeah. Didn't even think to tell about that. That's like the most interesting thing about the engine. <laughs> the head has marks from bolt threads and a bolt head and stuff as well um, on this cylinder. And so what we think is they dropped a screw in the intake manifold and it came down into this cylinder and was tinking around. Yeah, we're getting this motor third hand. Um, my buddy that sold me this motor, he got a Fox body and his Fox body had a motor in it. and the guy that sold him the Fox body was like, hey, I've got these two extra motors. And so he got a Fox body with three motors. And he doesn't have any other projects. He doesn't have a whole lot of room at his house. But uh, he was like, hey, you know, the guy said this one had rod knock, so you want it? And I was like, yeah. And so he actually sold me the two leftover motors with all the freaking reciprocating assemblies and a carburetor and intake manifold, all kinds of stuff for 200 bucks. So I jumped on it because I figured we were gonna throw it in something even if we throw it on a bicycle. Bicycle. <laughs> bicycle. <laughs> These are the last four lifters. Those I don't have a little magnetic rod thing, so we're just pulling them out by their little retaining clips, which, you know, is whatever. <laughs> just be careful not to bend anything. We're not careful, so you don't have to be no. that careful. <laughs> Dude, I'm being super careful. Look how careful I'm being. I'm just surprised I haven't dropped one yet. And there you go, they're all out. Now we flip it over. Now we flip it over. It is. If this motor had not been sitting for a long time, when we do this, it would uh, puke a bunch of coolant. Luckily, it's been sitting for a long time, so it shouldn't have any coolant in it. We hope. <laughs> uh, 
that be enough right there? Yeah, if you got a hole. Oh, oh hey, look. It's peaking oh, coolant. It's coolant. <laughs> it's coolant. Not much, though. That was... Yeah, this will be good. good angle for getting videos. Boom. So now we're going to pull the pan. A bunch of uh, what looks like tins. All the way around it. Dude, look at the oil pan gasket. I've never seen an oil pan gasket like that. It's pretty cool. A little sludgy. It's just, it's just probably assembly lube. I don't see any shiny metal in it or anything. But yeah, there's a little sludgy. Let's see here. Here. Yep, looks like a bottom end. It looks like a motor. This motor <laughs> is made of motor. <laughs> so it's this piston that we think is trouble. Yes, it is. So it's right here. What we're going to do basically is we're going to pull a main cap and uh, we're going to pull a rod cap. The easiest way to check for like rod knock, spun bearing and stuff, if it's on a fresh motor and you can hear it, that's usually a pretty good sign. But usually you can rock your caps. Let me feel this one. The bolt kind of felt loose. Um, so usually you can grab them and you can rock the caps, which there's none of that here. There's no piston movement except for forward and back, which there should be slight, like you should be able to move your rod like this, not like this. And none of them move like that. So if I spin the engine over right now, what would it do if there was rod? Would it do anything if I spun it over with like a ratchet? Yes, depending on how long it's like been here, you actually would see like this, like let's say this piston had rod on. Um, you would see the rest of the pistons move and this one would lag behind a little bit because it would have to fill up the bearing gap huh. before it moved. Let me, I think I have a, let's spin this thing over. Is this a 14? It turns over really easy. It's a 13. They all look perfectly fine. Let's see if I can spin it back and forth. Everything looks pretty good. Here, hold it right there. Um, so it looks like the caps are marked. So let's look at them all and make sure they put the right caps in the right spots. So that one's got both eights. This one's got two sevens. This one has a six and has a who six. knows? And it kind of looks like an upside down seven, but I assume it's a, a six. And this one has two fives. That one has two ones, two ones. This one has two twos. You need me to spin it. This one has two threes, and this one has two fours. So everything's in the right spot. Um, the only one that's iffy is the one that we think is iffy. So we'll probably pull this cap and check this bearing. Let's do that. But I'm telling you guys, this motor's fine. <laughs> We're pulling this cap or yep. this cap? No, this one. Okay. Because that's our piston that has our marks on it, guys. And this is also the one that has an iffy mark on the cap. So the rod cap has an iffy mark. The rod has a very clear six. All the rest have matching numbers, and you can only mix up two. It's not like you have a random cap laying around. So unless they did have a random cap laying around, it should be fine. But... These are Ford rods. They say Ford on them. Oops. Right there, there's the Ford logo. So they reuse these rods, new pistons, factory rods. Probably a factory crankshaft, which is fine. For the power goal that we're going for, which is nothing crazy, it's 
it's all good. Bo wants to make like between three and four hundred, and most like small block rotating assemblies will handle that. Usually, a good number to stay away from on American cars is 500. The Ford small block, it's a little lower just because they're known for like splitting in half at 500. Chevy small blocks will hold 500 and like be okay, but don't push it past that. Um, big blocks, Chevy big blocks only hold 500 because they snap crankshafts in half. So you gotta get an aftermarket crank. Fords will hold like 800. Yeah, that's the fun part. Yeah. So, do you have a rubber mallet? Yes. And just tap the... So he's got the, the nuts off. Because these are... Uh, they got nuts on them, they don't have bolts. And so that's another way you can tell, like, if you have high horsepower rods. Like, high horsepower rods will have ARP bolts that go to into them, not a stud in a I'm going to use the back side of this. No, nah, hit, the, hit the bolt. Yeah, there we go. There it goes. There it is. And there's the bearing. Hmm. It's a little toasty. So this bearing, as you guys can see, is chewed up. Oh, see, yeah, it's it is. a little chewed up. Yep. It's got a little groove in it. The reason it's probably like that is because when that piston smashed that freaking uh, bolt, all that pressure had to go into that bearing. That bearing absorbed that pressure. So if we look at the crankshaft, the crank is perfectly fine, but we probably need to order a bearing for this one. You think we should check the rest of the bearings? I think we should check at least one more. Okay, well, let's do that. <laughs> Let me put this back. Check at least one more and see what it looks like. But uh, I think that was our, I definitely don't think the engine has rod knock. I think that specific bearing got beat up from hitting that um, doohitchy, the, the, the screw. The way the bearing works is it floats on oil, and when there's enough pressure to move that oil out of the way, the bearing touches the crankshaft and it wears the bearing out. Like, that's how a bearing wears. There's no other way for it to wear. Here's the six right here. Oh, is it on the other side? Yeah, it's they on put the other it one. on backwards. They that's on that's backwards. why that bearing is jacked up. Yeah, they put it on because backwards. look the oil hole and the oil hole. I bet you that's what it was. I think these are supposed to match up, right? Yeah. Are they supposed to be on the same side? They're supposed to be on the same side. They had it yeah, on backwards. They did have it on backwards. That's the problem. I'm gonna check the one next to it. Just They'll probably cause. both make noise. <laughs> I'm gonna check this one just cause. <laughs> This is normal stuff. When Bo and I and Derek put together my engine, we actually swapped two caps as well. Um, you just kind of like get going and you don't pay much attention. Like we had never done it before. So we swapped two rods or two, yeah, two rod caps. Um, I found out about it. I don't even remember how I did. I replaced all the rod bearings and uh, put the motor back together and it's been fine ever since. It's little things that will mess you up when you're building your engine. Just take your time, make sure everything's right. Go from there. That one seems more normal. Yeah, that one seems a lot better. It's got a... So this one has a little bit of wear on it. Hmm. Makes These me want to... kind of worn out. Makes me want to look at some of the other ones. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Yeah. Was it on the right way? Yeah, because all the other ones matched up. Like you could read them. Chingus, chingus, chingus. The other ones you could read. Yeah. The numbers. This one was uh. The other way. Number. What is that? Seven? Or is that a two? It's a two. Uh, a two. Yeah. Yeah. This one was on right. Let me see. Yeah. Strange. So they had that one backwards. Do you know who assembled this motor? Yes. I do. <clears throat> well, interesting. Hmm. Let me look at one more. 
We might need to put all new bearings in this thing. Bearings are cheap. Just so everybody knows, bearings are cheap. They're cheap and they're easy to put in, especially when you've got the engine down to this. Like, if you see scarring on them and whatnot, like there's no reason not to like put all new bearings in it. If anybody has any knowledge, like just extensive knowledge of motors and see something that we're missing, dude, let us know in the comments. That's what comments are for. I read them all and I answer the majority of them unless it's, you know, something I don't feel requires an answer. We've said this before, we'll say it again. We have no clue what we're doing for the most part. We're the losers, not the winners. <laughs> like we just do it and figure it out as we go. Like I can't feel scarring in this one, yeah, but, but like, you can see it. yeah. But I wonder if it doesn't have coating on it and that's why it kind of looks like that. I don't you know? know. I don't know, the bearings that I put in my truck were all coated. Oh yeah. Well, we're gonna do some, some uh, Googling. We're definitely gonna order bearings just because of that one that's definitely scarred up. And uh, do you wanna pull a main cap? Yeah, let's do that while we're in here. Dang. Main caps, sorry, the camera's pointed to the moon. Um, <laughs> main caps are a little harder to get off. They have arrows and numbers on them, usually. They tell you forward, and then one, two, three, four, five on this. Um, sometimes they'll be real nice, and they'll put a hole here that's threaded, and you can put a bolt in there, and you can kind of pop them out. Because they hold in place pretty well. I'm just throwing these nuts back on. Real quick. I have a tendency to lose and forget stuff a lot. <laughs> so when your motor's this torn up, you just junk it, mostly because it's a Ford. <laughs> no, this is this is easy fix. And on a real note. You don't even have to have your engine torn this far down to like check the bearings and stuff. Like if there's enough room, most Fords don't have enough room because Ford is a bunch of jackasses. Um, and they and it, use like engine cradles that go underneath instead of just like a cross member. So on, on a normal vehicle, you can pull the pan down and you can, you can look at all your bearings and you can replace them inside the car. On a Ford, if you want to change the oil filter, you got to pull the engine out. If you're one of our hard body brothers you can do all this stuff from under the truck yeah it's amazing Oops. because we had to do it that's how we know that you can do it on a hard body <laughs> yes we have had to do it <clears throat> like I said, the main caps are a bit harder. <laughs> Let me get that right there. We'll bump it a little bit. It looks the same. It feels okay though. Like, I mean, they're super smooth. Yeah. Well, I think we'll just put all bearings in it. And, uh, well, shit. Oh, can you shove that bearing out? Can I what? Push the bearing out. Yeah. Just how many numbers on the back? So on the back of the bearing, right here, it's gonna have a number. Come on, camera, focus on it. So this number is gonna tell you if it's been like polished or resized, like 10 over, 20 over, things like that. What does that one say? It has a 10 on it, 
a C10. So I would assume that it's 10 over. It has a part number that we can Google. Okay. M529L S1. So probably the crankshaft is resized 10 over. Um, we'll have to check the, uh, the rods as well. And that's something important like engine clearance is so important. If it's too much clearance, like you're not gonna have enough oil and you're gonna cause rod knock. If it's not enough clearance, you're gonna cause rod knock. And like, you gotta check all this stuff. We're assuming that they did their due diligence and they plasti gauged or something this engine. I didn't do that on my engine. What I did is I bought a bunch of measuring tools and we measured it all out. Um, it was kind of a pain in the butt but we measured our cam or our crank journals. We measured the, uh, <clears throat> the rod cap size. We measured everything. Um, and Dave, the machinist that we use, he gave me these specs and he's like, as long as you're within here, you'll be okay. Um, my truck was a little tight, which isn't great for racing. For racing, you kind of want a loose engine. For um, like a daily driver, you want a little bit of a tight engine. The only reason is as you push more power, the more oil cushion that you can have, the better. That way you don't touch a bearing and spin a bearing. Because that's how you spin a bearing, by not having oil. So what do you think? I Let me think... go this way so you're not a black blob. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm actually kind of relieved that we took the bearings out. I mean, whether they were scarred or not, you know, we had that one that was scarred. I'm just glad, you know, we're going to be replacing them all. So yeah. we'll have peace of mind knowing that we got into this engine and, and at least replaced the bearings, you know. Everything's going to be, those will be relatively fresh. And uh, once we get it back together, we're going to start slapping all the accessories on it, put transmission on it, and we're going to throw it in the car. Did it come with everything, like an alternator and all that? Yeah. Nice. It's got everything, power pump and all so that. So it's complete so, motor. Yep, yep. And uh, I've been doing lots of Googling, lots of researching, which is what everybody should do. Don't take one person's word for it, or, well, one brain at least. <laughs> Don't just take our word for it. You know, if you got... Who has the one brain? <laughs> <laughs> we, we both have half a brain. Um, if you've got a project like this to do, you know, search lots of different places. You know, look on Google, ask some people, talk to a guy at a machine shop, you know. They love bending people's ear. Yeah, especially Dave. <laughs> we love you, Dave. Um, um, we'll probably take one of these bearings to Dave and get his opinion on it and see, because... We were told that this engine was just like started up and yeah. ran for a few minutes at tops, yeah. right? Yeah, we assumed that it was started up and it had that screw in it. And so it made noise and somebody either thought it was rod knock or thought something was wrong. So they shut it off immediately and they were like, this motor's done, you know? So I guess we'll see how done the motor is because, I mean, I'm not about to buy all new reciprocating parts for this thing, you know? If uh, if this motor doesn't work out, I'm gonna rotary the uh, <laughs> the Mustang <laughs> because that's worked out so. Yeah, because that's where it sounds. Hey, it cranks. It cranks. <laughs> it runs. Yeah, it, it runs. Does. Hey, y'all want to hear the rotary crank up? I think they said yes. <laughs> I'm gonna go get the key. <laughs> It'd be like on those little kid shows. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, the Mustang project's going good. I didn't expect to see that much um, kind of scarring, as Bo called it, uh, wear, I don't know, whatever. Kind of strange, um, especially for something that hasn't been ran very long. But like I said, we'll talk to Dave. They're non-coated, and all the ones that are in my engine are coated. And again, like, this is the second engine that we've disassembled on our channel. You gotta be... Oh my gosh. You gotta be standing behind it. What the hell? crap? <laughs> it doesn't want him to let him in. The body gets in the way. What the hell? Um, so we asked like about this body kit. Well, we didn't ask, but I, I made the title like, is it junk? And it's not junk. Oh man. It's just not great. There you go. <laughs> Sometimes you just have oh to whack gosh. it. Multiple times, apparently. There we go. All right, you got to be standing behind the car it for the beautiful great, effect. But it, it does look great. I'm going to blow my eardrums out, boys. It's 7.30 in the morning. We're going to wake the neighbors. Oh, yeah. That's what we do. Oh, no. The gimbal died. No, oh, no. I got it fixed. <laughs>
We have to order a new gimbal. Ours is breaking, and we just bought it. It's not gonna crank. Nice. Yeah. I don't have to bleed my ears this morning. <laughs> the gimbal's busted. Yay. I know, this stupid thing. I guess none of our projects work. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that sounds all right. Anyways, that's it. That's all we're doing this morning. Now we got to order bearings and day, get them put in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We it's learned something, which is a big deal. Better than what it could have been, but worse than I expected. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was. We expected, like the bearings to just be pristine, yeah. but that's all right. They're like we said, they're inexpensive and easy, easy to replace. So we'll get on that. But uh, please like this video, subscribe to our channel. If you're watching our videos and haven't subscribed, you're what's bitch. wrong with you? <laughs> yes, <laughs> subscribe for real, and. I don't know, buy our t-shirts. Hey, my cousin watches, and I didn't even really? know that he knew that I had a YouTube channel. The other day, the FedEx guy pulled up, and he was like, oh, you're one of the local losers. <laughs> I was like, weird. It's weird. <laughs> Anyways, that's it for today. Right. We out. Bye.